Astronomers have released the latest deep field image from NASA's James Webb Telescope and it reveals new details about a region of space known as Pandora's Cluster. Joining us live is Associate Professor Ivo Labe, for, who is an astronomer from Swinburne University. Ivo, I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Just tell us a bit about Pandora's Cluster. It's a great name. We have some images here. Explain for us what our viewers are about to be looking at. Well, before I begin, thank you for having me, by the way. It's just really hard to understand what an absolute game changer the telescope itself is. Um, it's been 25 years in the making. It's one and a half million kilometers away in cold space, and it's really revolutionizing the entire field of research on our cosmic origins. So what we're seeing here is really special phenomenon. So what we're seeing here is a galaxy cluster, you know, four billion years away in space. And it's such a concentration of matter that is bending the fabric of space-time itself. But what happens then is the space starts to function as a magnifying glass. And so it will magnify everything that sits behind the cluster. So what we're doing is we're taking the best telescope, we're pointing it at this natural phenomenon, and we're zooming in on the most distant regions of space. And what we're trying to do is really find the first stars and the first galaxies that formed after the Big Bang. The images really are remarkable. We saw lots of different colours. It almost looks like brightly coloured gems splattered a, across a, a, a black page. What are all those different colours that we're looking at? What do the, the colours signify? So these are old galaxies. And so it's hard to imagine because when you look at the stars at night, all the things that you see at the sky are stars. But these are not individual stars. Each of these things are a Milky Way in itself. So you're seeing 50,000 Milky Ways at enormous distances. And the different colors, they signify the different distances that the galaxies are. So you can see that there's these white spots. Those are the galaxy cluster that is basically functioning as the lens. And you see all these red little fuzzy things. And those are galaxies that are 13, 13 and a half billion light years away. So what you're actually seeing is light that traveled so far away that it took so long that we're looking back in time. So we're looking back 13 and a half billion years ago, basically almost to the beginning of the Big Bang. Gosh, okay, it, uh, it, it's a bit hard to, to wrap your head around when you talk about it like that, Evo. Well, it, it does seem for me. like we really are. <laughs> it, I'm glad to hear that. It, it seems like we really are in a new era of space research thanks to this new telescope, the James Webb. I mean, it is just amazing what it's turning up in terms of these images coming through pretty regularly. It must be so exciting for someone like you who has dedicated your life to, to studying distant universes. What are you expecting or, or hoping we'll discover next? I mean, it, we are just surprised as you are. I mean, I've, I've been playing this game for a little while, um, you know, but this is really a new era of astronomy and new windows on the cosmos. Beforehand, we had the Hubble Space Telescope, which was amazing. But Hubble is really grandpa's telescope. You know, um, this is a pictures that are so sharp and so diverse and so rich that even when we are looking at them, we're thinking that we're looking at a computer program, a simulation, right? The, the images are so good that it looks fake. And so what we are surprised by is that even now in the first images, we're seeing entirely new classes of objects. For example, we're seeing you know supermassive black holes that are growing in the early universe that has never been seen before. And, you know, this is something completely unexpected. I think the lesson to take away is that you need to keep an open mind when something like this comes along and let go of your expectations and we'll find things that we had not ever even imagined. We seem to be so lucky having so many experts doing this kind of work from here in Australia. How important is, is the Southern Hemisphere to this work and, and is Australia pulling its weight when it comes to this sort of research? I mean, Australia is a leader in many aspects of astronomy. For example, there's a, a very big radio telescope that's going to be built called the SKA, the Square Kilometre Array. This is, of course, a space telescope, so it sits in space. And in that sense, you know, the Southern Hemisphere doesn't really make a big difference. But there's many experts in, in Australia that actually focused on, on using uh, the James Webb Space Telescope, which is really the 800-pound gorilla of astronomy right now. It's like the major observatory. Eva Labe, it's fascinating to hear about. We really appreciate you making the time to share your insights and explain for us what we were looking at because they're great pictures. Thanks so much.